Hey, uh, this is uh, Dr. Uh, Jeremy uh, from the Temple of Miriam, the prophetess. And I'm here with uh, my colleague, William Brader, and one of my best, my best friend, one of my best friends, Mike Meadows. Um, and uh, Mike, uh, I, I'm, I'm here today to introduce them to each other, actually, and to take you along for the ride. Um, so let me tell you a little, uh, William, a little bit about my friend, Mike. Mike is a, uh, specialist in drummer drumming. He's, he's, uh, super famous. He was, he's a drummer for like Ben Queller and Sean Colvin and Willie Nelson. And he won like a Grammy at the age of 12. He invented his own drum, uh, and uh, he has the patent for like actually sitting on an instrument and playing it. Um, and uh, I've known him for a long time and, and he, he sa saved my life many, many times. Um, he's uh, an amazing hypnotist. And he, I, when we, you know, talked about, William and I talked about this show, we needed uh, a, a theme. So of course I went to my best friend, Mike Meadows and said, dude, can you, can you compose a theme? And uh, he composed a theme for the show. We should probably, maybe we should go ahead and play the theme and then we'll have Mike a little bit talk about how he conceived of the, th the, the music for the theme. You know? Go yeah? On. Yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and mute myself. Mike, you you, you want to introduce yourself or do you want to say something first or you wanna or you no. wanna you wanna play the thing first? I'll just roll the music. All right, roll the music. All right, here we go. <laughs> That was yeah, awesome. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. That's so fantastic. That, that is fantastic. Thanks. I'm so glad you like it. Oh, I didn't. So I didn't realize that, you know, that you played all of those different instruments um, before. I, I knew that you were a percussionist and, you know, that you could like, pop, you know, that, You've always amazed me with your singing. And then I knew that you could like, you know, maybe bang out a little bit on a, a, maybe a guitar, find your basics of way around a guitar and, a, and, and maybe a keyboard. But like your, your whole thing is really, that I've known you has been drums and percussion. And like, you're playing all sorts of stuff here. Like you're playing a theremin, you're, 
You're doing all. You, you, can you tell us a, lo- a little bit about that? That was amazing. Thanks, man. Um, well, you know, actually, the the my musical journey started pretty young, and uh, piano was my first instrument when I was three. So, um, you know, I think I I think of Western music mostly in terms of of piano, and uh, along the way, you know, I started playing trumpet when I was nine had my first audition to sing when I was five. Uh, I've just, you know, kept picking up (laughs) different instruments throughout my life. And I started in the classical world, but then I got into jazz and into rock and soul. And then, you know, later I started traveling and getting into like uh, a lot of African music and Native American music, uh, classical Indian, Brazilian, Cuban just sort of soaking up all these different styles from all over the world and sort of learning different instruments along the way as well. Hmm. And, and, and um, uh, you're pretty, you're a specialist in, in really African drumming, you know, isn't that right? You went to Africa and you studied there and in various different types of drumming, uh, you're, you know, you, you refined your techniques there, didn't you? Uh, it's certainly one of the places that I've spent a lot of time. I've gone to Africa several, several times, specifically, predominantly to Ghana and Zimbabwe and studying in Ghana with, you know, the, the Ga, the Ashanti, the Dagara, the Ewe, the Ga, um, oh, I said the Ga already, um, the, <laughs> D- the Dagomba, um, and then in Zimbabwe, it was studying in Bira music with the Shona. Uh, so, yeah, I got into these different styles, but, uh, you know, I also have gotten really into Carnatic music of South India and studying Kanjira and Rundungam and, and then Hindustani tabla. And, you know, I just, I just started really young with everything. So I picked up a few things along the way. Yeah, I know. Well, I've seen you make instruments out of like, uh nothing uh i showed i showed um william last night that crazy video of you uh playing a thermos <laughs> yeah that was william? really really awesome yeah <laughs> just spotlight yourself yeah yeah william's reaction was pretty 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 amazed <laughs> that's funny so i'm curious to know what um instruments are you playing in the song like how many instruments did you play and how did you put that together yeah so at first you know jeremy asked me uh you know if i could write a a theme song for him and and i needed a little bit of direction i mean i've known jeremy for a long time and i know (laughs) but but you know what was it that he was looking for and what were the different elements and uh you know i know he's a big frank zappa fan and I know that he wanted something that's that's got some like hoodoo roots vibe to it, and um, and sort of these also like the the some of the Jewish like the feeling of of uh, some klezmer, and I don't play accordion, but I did put a, a vox organ in there and kind of <laughs> a little bit of that vibe. Um, yeah. And, and the then, penny penny whistle kind of is is a klezmer instrument too, really. Right. I mean, it's a you know, but I'm not the the uh, the melody. I think is some you are going to talk about that and the pe- penny whistle on it. It's melody, but, but the penny whistle as an instrument is kind of klezmer, yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, and and the you know he he also gave me the the what was the Baron. Baron Samadhi uh, by 10CC, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, a band uh, in the 70s, classic rock band, for those of you that don't know, that, you know, were amazing. And um, and uh, they have this fantastic song about uh, the Baron. And in that, I uh, used it have used it for my theme song sort of like you know as my go-to like inspiring song for a really long time and one of the great things I love about that song is that everything that they 
say the Baron can do are it's something that I can actually do. I've spent time in my life learning how to do. So they talk about how he can, you know, walk on broken glass and that he can, you know, defy fire and you can slit his throat and he won't drop dead and and he can do all those things. And I really love like Cosmic Debris by Frank Zappa, of course, which is got that similar, it's a whole story about, you know, visiting the mysterious guru and uh, him hypnotizing them and, and, uh, and, and, and it's got, and so you've actually kind of combined both of those those fabulous things that I've, I've always like the seventies of the, of, uh, uh, of, of the, of 10 CC and that, that vibe, you know, and that, and the Frank Zappa wild crazy. It's awesome. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, no, man. I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you like it so much. Um, yeah, that's what I, I was drawing from those different sources and from knowing you. And, you know, I also knew that we wanted to keep it like, upbeat and and short but also kind of explain a little bit about the show and 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 i i I asked you to send me a list of like uh the the different things that you do you know like chiromancy and all that stuff and so i wanted to put a bunch of those into it as well you know sort of listing the things and going through it and um so instrumentation wise the the place i started though was with a with a talking drum and specifically a talking drum from uh the the away people that they use in brecate music which is a, a a religious music and it's a uh, um you know very similar to voodoo and they have, uh, you know, like altars and they have lots of different spells and they have uh, things that they make. They do lots of ceremony. Mm -hmm. And people also get get possessed by ancestors that have messages and they have these these ceremonies that the, the drums are, are uh, very central to. And I've actually gone and, and studied with them and participated in those ceremonies and uh you know been a part of that and so i wanted to take some of that brecate music and and put it into this as well and so the i actually have this talking drum here and and this uh i got this in ghana um it was made for me and it's specifically a brecate talking drum um which is different then the the lead brecate drum is is bigger and i have one of those as well but i wanted this one for the the sound and this one you can hear inside it has the spirits right so those are the spirits that were blessed and put inside of this drum to make it um a, a specifically a brecate drum and so Here's the, the stick that also goes with it. So you change the pitch by squeezing it. And so the rhythm that I started with was a, a traditional brecate rhythm that uh, goes like this. So that that was really the starting place of of building everything off of that. I wanted to have that rhythm and, and put the brecate influence in there. Um, and and along with that, central to a lot of African music is the the bell pattern. And so this is what's known as a gogonquit. And uh, sometimes they have double bells, um, but this is a single single bell gogonqui and uh this is a stick also from ghana and <clears throat> when i picked this out uh you know i i got a few different ones but they they would bring me like 
bags full, like a pile. They would give you a pile and you'd spend, you know, three or four hours <laughs> just trying each one because so many of them are, are cracked or the tuning of them is weird. And so uh, it takes a long time to, to find good sounding gogonkwi, um, but this is a good one. And so the bell pattern that goes with that, the brekete drum part is the... So that's going in there as well. So I took those those elements of Brekete and then started building the whole track from there. That's 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 absolutely that's incredible. So I just to I, I, for those who don't know, I, I want to say that the Brekete and the Awe religion are sort of the African side of the um, religions. Of the uh, of uh, of voodoo, uh, it's it's uh, like voodoo is a a derivative, a syncretic religion, you know, a, a synchronicity re religion of between Catholicism and the religion of uh, Brecht. If I understand correctly, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe uh, my understanding is that it, it's the derivative of of Brecate and Awe. And and those uh, religions have uh, you know the drumming is integral in 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 religious ceremonies and in their daily life and transformation um, um, uh, and uh, both magically and spiritually as you were saying uh, is that right Yeah, totally. Um, for, from my just from my personal experience and and seeing. Like I've I've also studied uh, voodoo drumming, and uh, th there's there's things that that um, you know sort of shifted when they were brought over. Like you don't see the um, like the cultural drumming of the Awe is is sort of the drumming that ended up in voodoo, but uh, the 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 brekete drumming didn't come along with the practices the practices of brekete are in voodoo but but the drumming is actually uh quite different than what ended up in in voodoo drumming right wow that, 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 that's fast that's incredible but so thank you for incorporating that into into the theme um do you uh can you know can you play that track or that kind of thing, or I, I don't want to throw you off course if you were in the uh, middle of a thought. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the the specific um, tracks pulled up right now, but the uh, yeah, I mean, you have that bell and 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 the talking drum, and then I I played the drum kit, so I layered okay. that, and I wanted that to be like a um, get some of that '70s vibe, you know, and so p playing a more traditional drum kit and keeping it upbeat and keeping like a real kind of four on the floor movement happening. And, uh, and then, you know, the, the song sort of started with that rhythmic foundation. And then I started adding, you know, the next thing was to add that the Vox organ sound, which is the, the sound of the, um, almost like an accordion. It's, it's again, a seventies style organ. Um, and so did you play that organ or was that synthesized? How did you go about using so that? That one was a, a virtual replication of it, um, what they call a VST. Uh, and they, oh yeah, I can't pull up the individual. I'm looking to see if I can pull up the tracks, but to, in order to do my audio and to play the one track, I'd have to shut my whole audio down and pull up just that separately. So it's not gonna, not gonna work. Um, but, uh, man, it's technology these days is amazing. Um, you know, they, they have stuff where they basically sample the actual sounds of, of these instruments. And then it sounds exactly like that. You know, it's like, you can't really tell the difference anymore in a lot of them it's like going through an amp and mic'd by this type of mic and you can change you know on the computer what kind of mic 
you're using on it. So so it's it's so cool because you know pre pandemic uh, I I was on tour a lot with different people, but I could still I could be on an airplane and I could have a little keyboard and I could still be working on tracks and it sounds like a Wurlitzer or a Rhodes or a B3 because the sounds are so great now, you know. So I, I, that was one that I used a, a, like a virtual instrument as opposed to to a real one. But most of the stuff on there was was real instruments. What other instruments did you have uh, on there that you were playing? So uh, there's a a Moog bass, which is spelled M O O G, and Moog is a um, Bob Moog was sort of one of the the first in um to create a synthesizer so synthesizers you know got really popular in the the 70s and the 80s and now you know they're they're very popular as well and um but that moog sound was sort of a classic like you're hearing a lot of like parliament funkadelic and um it's got a little bit of a, a psychedelic feel to it and so i wanted to put a moog in there and that I actually do have a couple different Moog synthesizers. And so I can, I, I could actually play the real thing on there. And um, then I, I put a theremin on there. Wait, 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 wait. I can, uh, wait. Before you get to the theremin, I got, have to tell you something about the, the Moog uh, huh. and why psychically that it was an unbelievable choice instrumentally you know, as an instrument that there's a synchronicity there. Okay. okay. And, and um, the synchronicity is this, when I was a youngster and I was about seven or eight, you know, my parents made me play piano and take piano lessons. And I was, I was pretty, you know, not bad for my age. And um, I was basically scamming the entire the teacher the entire time because I could I was pretty skilled at at, at memorizing music, which and just being able to play it, which I believe is now the Suzuki method, without actually learning the notes. And so she would play something, and I would play it back, and it would be look as if though I was practicing, and I really wasn't didn't really know what. Well, the heck was going on but be and because of that my parents said listen you need to study harder we caught you out you need to study harder you know um it, you know what would motivate you and this is now around 1979 or 78 8 9ish and i said well i've read about this thing called the moog synthesizer and and you can make all these noises with it. And it's unbelievable. It's, the, it's this thing. And I had been playing records of uh, Switched on Bach. And, um, and there was a Japanese, I believe, artist whose name I can't remember, who did like uh, Claire de Lune and all of these classics uh, with the synthesizer. It was like super awesome. And um, and uh, uh, the CD player had not yet been invented. And, uh, and for my 10th birthday, I opened it up and that would have been 1980. You know, I opened it up or 1979, the box. And my father had bought me, Moog had made a home synthesizer for personal use. And I played with that thing for hours. I brought it into school, into religious, into my, I, I was, went to Jewish school growing up. And like, I was known as the synthesizer guy. So I could do all these cool special, you didn't know this. I could do all these special effects. And so when we put on the school plays, I would be in the back and through the synthesizer, I could make like gun sounds and thunder. And I was making all the, I was making, it was like, I was like the catch me out. I was like the sound guy, you know? And then of course it all fell apart because I picked up something else and became interested in something else. But that, that's, so it's amazing. It's another synchronicity. You, you like pulled out that perfect, 
having the Moog in there is like, it's, it's, it really speaks to my core, you know? Yeah, I had no idea. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just intuited then, that. You, you psychically did it, man. And so, so tell us about the theremin. I'm, I interrupted the theremin story. Oh, it's okay. It's uh, I'm just going over uh, more of the stuff that that's on there. So the theremin is such a weird instrument. Um, can you hear that? So the theremin uh you know it uh is actually a, a classical instrument there are people who are virtuosos who who play amazing pieces of classical music and it's very tricky um because it's all about your movement and the slightest movement of your hands changes the pitch and if you wave your hand a little bit or wiggle it that gives it that vibrato the uh, sound you know and then your left hand is controlling the volume. So as you move it up, the volume increases. As you move it down, the volume decreases. And then as you move closer to it, it gets higher. And you move further away, it gets lower. Um, but the theremin is such a, a, a fun and cool instrument. And it, it's like in uh, one place it got used a lot was like these, these old black and white, like, uh, horror films and and you know it was kind of the sound of like the ghost you know um, i love that you know I I, I I i the theremin again you nailed it by putting a theremin in there because when you when you just said i love the old black and white stuff i uh you might know that i have that this affinity for like the amazing criswell who was uh, the narrator of those uh, of those crappy Ed Wood movies right. from you know those black and white uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space totally. and uh, and I, I and they have that 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 you know monster Adams family in it so yeah totally yeah I knew I knew I knew about that so I I, I I knew that you had a, an affinity for for that and for a lot of those old black and white movies like that, and so I wanted to kind of put that element in there and uh, you know uh, find a way to like sort of subtly put it in. So it's just it's in little little bits and pieces there. Um, Can you play that one more time for us and show us the how the volume and how everything works just one more time? Yeah, let me maybe adjust this camera. If you can see it a little better on this, on the iPhone camera. Is that a better view? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Great. Right. So that controls the volume. And then over here we have the pitch. So. So it's a it's a weird instrument and you know like having to find like the right uh pitches is tricky you know um and did you just guess that i guess yeah uh, to put your hand oh uh, yeah well i find it on there i figure it out and then uh, and then i can record it you know um and then you know, all, with with modern technology, you can if you get it once, then you can copy and paste. But uh, I actually uh, didn't do that because um, I wanted this track also like a, a very common thing. Most music, modern music these days, uh, is is done with what they call a click track, and on the grid. So it it has a a click and then you can sort of quantize is what they call it where you 
make everything fit in the grid, right? So it's very mechanically precise. And um, to me, that was sort of the opposite of what I wanted to do for this track. So this is not done to any sort of click track or grid purposefully. So I wasn't doing any copy and, and pasting of anything. It's like, it's all played straight through, right? So, because if I tried to copy it and paste it, it's going to be like just slightly different because of the human element of this track. Um, and again, that's just an artistic choice. Like cert certain things make sense to be with a click, but but if you want something to breathe and you want it to kind of change and, and move, uh, then you don't want to do that. And again, for this being, you know, Jeremy's theme song and, and what it represented, I didn't want it to feel confined or, or strict or structured. I wanted to, to let it breathe and, and, and be human and have those elements in there, you know? So, uh, I actually, there's, none of it was to a click none of it was copy and pasted it was all played through so which means you have to get it right <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible it means right. le less less opportunity for making mistakes you know <laughs> well yeah, I, I don't think i've seen you make very many of those <laughs> I make plenty. They, they they just go unnoticed. <laughs> that's okay. Hey, that, uh, good enough. Good enough. I'm just good, good at enough. pretending like I meant to do it. <laughs> well, uh, well, <laughs> I don't suppose your other your 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 the song that you're currently working on. Uh, uh, we we should not. We we. I, I don't know if you want to mention it. What what you're allowed to mention and what you're not. I don't want to give it away. Oh, well, we can hint. We'll have to save that for another another day. <laughs> yeah, but you're currently working on a really good song, which is related to the topic that with which we speak about, which we are speaking at present to try to get the point across to our listeners or whatever. True. Or watchers, viewers, Zoomers, whoever, Discordians. <laughs> <laughs> Uh well, thank you. My gosh, that uh, do you have any questions, William? Yeah, I've got one quick question. I'm just wondering about the song length. Why did you decide to have it be around that two minute mark? Is there like a standard for song length, or is that just what felt good to you? Like, why did you decide on that that length? Well, I knew that I didn't want the song to be. Uh too long i didn't i didn't want it to be like this three or four minute song or i, I didn't want it to be a, a long odyssey i wanted it to be it's a, a theme, theme. yeah it's a theme song and and even if you just use half of it you know that would be good you can fade in and fade out but i also wanted it to be a song that like you could get into and and enjoy for a couple minutes if you want to so it's something that that you can actually listen to it and it can hold its own as a song not just a 30 second snippet right but something that worked sort of in either of those contexts like a 30 second snippet for the the purpose of an intro or something that um could actually stand on its own as a song and and says what it needs to say you know um and uh you know i did i did little interesting bits too like like the intro there's there's 15 snare hits before instead of like a typical thing would be 16 so it's like a little odd, like that's kind of a nod to Zappa because Zappa loved to do like a lot of odd time signatures. And so it's it's just like a little quirky, you know, weird bit. Like instead of doing 16 hits or eight hits, there's actually 15 hits in the beginning. So, it's a so it gives it a little bit of like an odd jolt too because we're used to the ramp being in sets of, of four, you know, or sets of three typically, but, but um 15 is like a weird structure you know um yeah and you and you you incorporated the uh you incorporated a tambourine that's right yeah right. I, I, for the temple of miriam i made sure to have a tambourine in there there's another you know i did a, a sine wave synthesizer in there which a sine wave is just a pure um tonal wave so it's it it is literally not any other like fancy type of 
thing. It's, it's a pure sine wave, which the sine wave is the real nice curve, you know? And um, so there's that pure tone of the sine wave also thrown in there. I also, is that just humming in the background or is that, you know, there's what is a that melody, doing? A melody line that happens in there of a, uh, that's, um, I'm playing different notes within the, the scale of the song. And it's sort of a counter melody that you hear kind of going against the theremin, like they're kind of uh, playing off of each other. It's a little melody in there, but it's a pure sine wave. There's some pure mysticism in this in this song. So I urge listeners not to play it backwards. You know, definitely do not play it backwards. But what is interesting, all another, I mean, uh, there uh, is that um, music is one of the uh, bibli. I was just thinking about this. Is one of the biblically biblically approved methods of magic did you know that Be i wasn't aware of that yeah because um because if you if you think about it in um you know how um music soothes the savage beast that 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 is taken from uh david playing the harp or the lyra to calm uh king saul and 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 king saul who probably had like bipolar disorder what was affected by demons and mm -hmm. the only thing that soothed the savage beast or that would chase away would calm him down and soothe him and and chase away the demons was david playing his his harp or his lyre so it is it's an act of magic that occurs in the Bible and it is one of the biblically approved, you know, uh, exceptions to that rule uh, about no, no, you know, no magic can be performed because clearly David, David does it to drive out to David, to drive out demons. So, right. so there you go. There's a lot of mysticism in your music. <laughs> I had to make it that way. Well, that's actually, that gives rise to that whole um, theory about music driving out uh, demons in Jewish um, folk magic. That is exactly correct that you played loud music chases away, uh, you know, chases away the demons. And demons, uh, Mazakim, are scared of thunder uh, for that uh uh, very reason and loud noises and and that is the reason that we blow the horn on the new year um blowing the horn is used uh as an instrument um in uh exorcisms to drive out demons blowing the shofar and it's also specifically used at the head of the new year which is our, the holiest uh, you know, Rosh Hashanah, you know, Rosh Hashanah, you have Yom Kippur and Passover. Those like the, the triad of like super holidays um, and the high holidays. And um, it's specifically blown, uh, blown on the head of the new year, Rosh Hashanah, to confound Satan. Hmm. So, so Jewish music is uh, good in exorcisms and confounding satan so your music was very powerful wow That's yeah cool. i mean you know you've incorporated brecate you've got ancestral veneration going on you got an all spirits in your drums like you've got a this there's so many layers to this song it's in, you know and references right zappa and baron the, you know 10 cc and baron and the theremin and the moog and the it's like and that, you know, the, 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 uh, tambourine, the timbrel. Yeah. Yeah, man. And it's quite amazing. He played everything on the track. So that, that's really awesome. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. It, 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 sh should we, should we play it as an outro? Sure, we can play it one more time. Yeah. 
let's play it one more time as like a as like a little, a little outro but uh, but if people want to listen to some of your music or check out some of your stuff where should they go meadows drums meadows yeah meadows, yeah, meadows drums.com is my website yeah okay yeah Me- uh, can you tell us any of the secret things that you're working on right now for secret movies, uh, you know, celebrities or not, or you're not allowed? Uh, I don't, I don't know what I can talk about or what I can't talk about. I'm working on some songs for myself, uh, trying to get yeah. a EP or a record out next year and doing some other collaborative projects with other people, as well as the, the typical hired gun stuff that I'm always doing. Yeah, yeah. Lots, lots of irons in the fire. That lot, yeah, a super, a lot of irons for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, uh, do you have videos on your uh, 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 on your web on your on your site there of like you playing, you know, other drums and stuff like that? Yeah, there's yeah, there's some videos on there from from different things, and uh, there's some songs that I've played on some of my own songs. Oh, I do have a a project coming out, hopefully in the next few months that uh, that some people might find interesting. That's uh, um, based on synesthesia. Oh um, wow! My my friend Aton Sekons and I uh, sort of recorded these pieces, and um, each one goes through the the color wheel. So going from you know red and then orange and then green etc and and what we would do is is each song is a color and we would talk about that color and what it meant and what it felt like and um and we would look up you know the the meanings of these colors for people and we then would uh just bathe the entire studio in that color so we would have the 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 lights would all be red on the day that we tracked red, you know, and then when we tracked green, all of the lighting and everything was green and we were focused on green and what that meant and what that felt like and, and the traditional meanings as well as our own meanings. And so we, we did each song on a different day. We didn't do them all at the same time. We wanted to sort of be clearly focused on one thing at a time and they're all instrumental pieces and there's an element that always goes from one of the pieces into the next, just like a color wheel is blended together. Uh, these tracks also have an element that ties them and blends them. And the, the whole record is, is meant for meditation and contemplation and uh, you know, something that you just can put on and, and breathe and relax and sort of be bathed in the sound and, and each color moves up a different note in the scale. So it kind of moves through uh, a cycle, you know, and has a, a, a completion to it. So I know we, we finished, um, we pretty much finished mixing it. So I think we just have to have it mastered and do the artwork and all that kind of stuff. And so that, that hopefully will be out in the next couple months. And where can we learn about that? Uh, I'll have some stuff on my website, meadowsdrums.com. Um, you can also find me on social media, Mike Meadows on, on Facebook and Twitter, uh, Meadows Drums on Instagram. So I'm well, sure I'll... I, I, we want to, I want to talk, uh, we're going to have to bring you back and talk about, you've got this, the, some of the fascinating work on auditory, uh, you know, speaking of uh, synesthesias you've got the, the, the this fascinating work on auditory hallucinations or illusions that uh, we'll have to we'll have to discuss sometime it's absolutely incredible yeah. yeah yeah well let's go ahead and play the outro let's do it thank All you right. so much yeah yeah this is incredible thank you man yeah thank you it's like the best theme song ever created <laughs> thanks for having me all right here we go Yeah.
Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for having me.